But I would still put a lot of it on, fam. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back. So I'm finally doing it. It is an updated version of my if I weren't a YouTuber makeup bag. And the idea behind this is that as creators, we have these heaving stashes of things that we have tried for various reasons. And so if I were to distill down my collection to the things that if I were using my imagination, getting ready every morning, just me, and had no accountability, no cameras, no nothing, what would be the grouping of makeup that I would choose? Or let's say my whole makeup collection got wiped out and I wasn't a YouTuber anymore, what would I go and repurchase as my personal makeup routine? Those are the mental exercises that I did in approaching this video. I did a video like this a year ago, but I have been asked quite a bit to do an updated version. So I have my bag right here. And yes, there are very few things in here. I did, well, it's pretty packed to the gills, but it's a small bag. So I'm gonna move you guys in and we will talk through my reasons for choosing the things that I chose and they might surprise you. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is foundation. And this was the hardest one for me, honestly, because I think that's one of the things that I take the most comfort in having a lot of. Foundations determine the level of coverage of the rest of your look. Yes, you can bend to fit in a lot of ways with foundations. You can make them do what you want them to ultimately, but most of them have an ideal use case. They have a thing they want to do. And I would say that Ah, the most flexible one that I own is the EXA. It has a great shade range, has a great formula, it has that lit within kind of mica glow thing to it, but it also has amazing flexibility of coverage. So you can wear this as thin as a skin tint or you can build it up and powder it and wear it full coverage. It's one of the only foundations that I know to do that. And I am going to try to apply this very much like a skin tint. So I'm gonna use it with a brush here. I have it in the shade 530 Therese, I wanna say, is what this is called. Yes, it's a very close shade match for me. I wanna talk about though, the mindset that I'm going into this with. First of all, this is going to be a all, most if not all, cream look. And that is because I really think that if it were me all the time, only me, just putting on makeup to make myself happy, I would probably, always do pure cream looks. I guess if I had to choose, you know, if I had to pick one and make like a really distilled down bag, because honestly, if I had done both, if I had talked about my Holy Grail's bag for creams and for powders today, it would have been like an hour and a half long video and I'm not doing that. But if you guys want a second version of this that is all powders or what I would do for like a more long wearing look, let me know. I like doing this kind of thing. I think if I were even to distill my collection down by this much though, I would still lean on tools very heavily. I'm not one of those people who thinks that it's like simpler or easier to use my fingers to put products on. Honestly, it makes me crazy. So I am going in with my Kosas Revealer Concealer. This is one of the most agreeable formulas I have ever used. I love being able to put on a concealer and forget about it. I feel like there are so many people who talk, uh, creators and stuff like that, who talk about how this is the hardest thing to find in a routine, is a concealer that you really, really like. And I think that that's why like Shape Tape from Tarte gets such like almost a memeified rap because everybody found that concealer at the same time, I guess when it came out, and they were like, this is it, this is the holy grail, I never have to look for another concealer. And there are so many people who still stick to it. And it's because it's actually so hard to find a really good concealer. You guys saw I just decluttered my Hourglass concealer because even that, even Hourglass, somebody who I consider to be pretty darn good at complexion products, couldn't make something that was both nourishing and long wearing on my skin. So, I mean, I definitely think that if I were not a YouTuber, I would have a very, very normal makeup routine. Normal meaning like I would go in the same order every single day kind of thing. I wouldn't necessarily be like experimenting as much. Although who knows, you know, with the passage of time and everything, it's really hard to quantify how much experience I've gotten just because of my channel or how much experience I would have gotten if I didn't have a channel just out of my own personal curiosity because I am inherently very curious when it comes to makeup. So I would say, and this is going to surprise some of you guys, but understand that yes, these kinds of things exist. I love a makeup artist owned brand. I really, really do. And so like Salt New York and Danessa Myricks and uh, Daniel Sandler. If I were to quit YouTube now, 
Those would be the things that I would use. But if I were never a YouTuber, I still think that I would lean on one and done products a lot more than like larger palettes of things. I'm not sure that I would be in as much of a painterly mindset when it came to doing my own makeup, you know? So I did pare it down to the things that were tiny. That's the other thing is when you're dealing with like entire palettes of things, you're gonna carry like five, five different colors of it or you're gonna carry something that is relatively large, you know, to be traveling with. And before I was a YouTuber, literally my makeup fit in a bag like this. So I was never like a caboodles person. So the things that I would go towards when it comes to contour and blush would probably be these two things, the Westman Atelier. So I have Biscuit right here. And this is probably the contour that I would use. <laughs> I just think that Westman Atelier is one of those brands that comes to mind when you talk about simplifying your makeup routine because that's what they aim to do. They really wanna be your only products. And so they make, you know, a few really, really game-changing products. And honestly, if I weren't wearing any foundation, quote unquote, if I were just going with like a sunscreen and was going for an even lighter weight face of cream makeup, I would have gone with their foundation stick underneath my eyes and like as my concealer as well. I think something that I have kind of overcome is my hang up about wearing and I look with a cream face of makeup. I've gotten good enough at doing a cream face of makeup that I feel like is a full look. It used to be that when I would do cream makeup, I always felt like I, it was just like a glossier face, you know, and it never really looked complete. But a lot of times when I put the work in, I wanna look like I put the work in to some extent. <laughs> I wanna look better. <laughs> and for me, it was hard for me to kind of do a cream look that was really like, oh, easy breezy on my face. And then I would do an eye look and they look totally incongruous. And I think I've gotten to a point now where the two meet. I don't do as dramatic of eye looks and I don't do as, I don't know, like glossier of a face. And to me, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that cream products have really like moved into the mainstream of popularity. And so there are a lot more options in terms of cream formulas. You're not just dealing with cloud paint. You can do a lot of things. So now I'm going in with Petal. This is just, you know, again, if I, if it were me, non-YouTuber, in the morning, that's what I would do, <laughs> you know? Just smudge something on there and know that it is a reliable shade that's always going to look flattering on me. And I'm not trying to necessarily engineer it with the, the color palette of my outfit or anything like that. I'm going with things that look good on me that I don't have to think about. Because I do think that there are a lot of like, you know, different options when I'm doing my makeup where I am. I'm, I mean, that's pretty, basically like the foundation of my channel, right? Is color theory is, you know, when you do decide that you're going to experiment, how do you make sure that you nestle that experiment into a bunch of other things that you know how they're going to work in order to make it look at home and so you don't have to go wash your face and start over. And so, that is something that, you know, I pride myself on having a pretty good understanding of, but if I were just mindlessly doing this like for work in the morning every day or something, I would want something that I knew was going to perform every single day. But I would still put a lot of it on, fam. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. And really this is like a reality that, I mean, obviously it could never exist because I am a YouTuber and there's no removing knowledge from your brain. But I think that even if all I were doing was consuming content, I would still have stumbled upon a passion for a lot of blush and for Fjord's cheeks, you know? Also, I think that one thing that I would do regardless, at least I'd like to hope that I still would have come around to embracing my natural skin tone. I was tanning, tanning, tanning so much, like not real tanning, but fake tanning. And it completely altered my hair color, the way that I thought my hair was supposed to look. It completely altered the way that I thought that my undertones were when it came to my makeup. And when I finally just like, it took a really long time to get used to seeing myself with my natural paleness. When I finally just adapted to it, I was like, you know what? It's a lot easier to find makeup that I know that I'm gonna like because actually my skin is very, very neutral. It's not as warm as I thought. And I don't feel like I'm like shoehorning myself into a color story that doesn't work for me. I don't think I included a highlighter in this whole situation. I don't know. 
Let's cross that bridge when we get there. Let's talk about eyes. So the second hardest thing I would say was picking a palette because I was always a one palette kind of person. I would have like the chocolate bar palette and just like pan it to death or like this old Tarte palette, pan it to death. I didn't even learn the names of makeup products. I was just like, those are some browns and I would just buy it and then I would just use it. I kind of just wanted to solve it at the end of the day. And I think that that's still what I do for other people with my channel. That is the purpose that my channel serves is to help you solve things in your makeup routine. And so I still think I have the same mindset around these kinds of things, but I do have a lot more makeup. So when I was going for my eyeshadows, I was like, where would I go if I only wanted one or two and I was gonna wear them every single day? And I came down between two and they're both very, very tiny. And that is the Charlotte Tilbury Exaggerize, even though this costs a fortune, it's still so concise. And then the Victoria Beckham Signature Eye Brick. And it's just, you know, I think that I would just be quite boring and I would be quite concise. I would at least like to think that about myself. So I'm gonna start with the Charlotte Tilbury and see if I even wanna dip into this. Uh-oh, the potato's awake. That, he slept for a long time. So yeah, the way that I used to do makeup is that I would literally just like take my brush in the deepest shade and honestly, I was a lot more comfortable wearing really deep shades at the time because I was like such a, I don't know, recovering emo kid that I would, I actually would go and buy pots of individual eyeshadows from MAC and one of them that I would literally use in my crease and all around my eye was like a glittery black. I thought that that looked good on me and it was definitely a vibe. It was definitely a vibe. That was the way that I coped with having small eyes was just assuming that what they needed was just tons and tons of black eyeshadow. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going in with this really honestly undupable shade. When I compared this palette to the Wayne Goss Imperial Topaz palette, Someone commented and said, I think that that matte shade in Exaggerize, cause she owned this palette, she said that is a, a pan of eyeshadow that I have found nothing else like. And she has like panned that particular eyeshadow and none of the others in the palette. And she's having anxiety like, well, what do I do now? I don't know if I wanna pay $53 to repurchase this palette when I haven't used all the other shadows up, but I have never found another shade like this. And it's true. I had to admit that that's true. When I was talking about the difference between the two, I called out the fact that the Wayne Goss palette is very, very warm and this one does lean cooler, but that doesn't really put a fine enough point on how valuable that quality is. And it really does make a huge difference that this does have that cool tone quality to it. It just, I mean, look at that. And I think that that's another thing that I would do were I only picking just like one kind of person's worth of makeup essentially, because I have several people's worth of makeup here. I would probably stick with one set of tones. I would probably, you know, stay in the neutral, neutral to cool values like this. So I'm going in with that shimmery kind of camel shade. And I think that that works really, really beautifully with what I'm wearing and with my skin tone. And I think that the overarching message here, like the thesis statement of what I would do if I were approaching these things is that I would definitely lean on luxury products. <laughs> I would pay more to have fewer better things if it were just me. Yeah. Ooh, got that highlight shade. Mm, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Wow, that's such a pretty highlight shade. Okay. I like these because like the little quads that she makes because they're mapped out for you basically. Like she even says, prime, enlarge, pop, define. Even if that's not the mapping that you follow, she's made an attempt to help you understand the best way to use these and there is at least some kind of method to them. You know, some quads are put together in color stories. Like, oh, you wanna wear all green on your eyes. Here's five greens or whatever. But like this is put together in a way that's like, this is meant to be maybe your only eyeshadow palette. And it's very, very tiny. And you know, $53 is a whole lot of money for a bunch of eyeshadows. But if it's your only eyeshadow that you own, you know, it might be the only eyeshadow that you own. And in that case, $53, it solved the problem for you. So why not? So then we have this lovely glitter that I always put on my finger. And it's a very, very daytime wearable glitter. 
It is super, super pretty. It is a uh, kind of a neutral pewter shade. I do like the Wayne Goss one for its flexibility. I, I probably prefer it. It's a little bit more warm toned, but I think that, you know, again, if this were a day to day look for me, an everyday palette, I would never, I would never look at that glitter and go, mm, I'm tired of that glitter. You know, I would never kick it out of bed. <laughs> I like that there are two satins, a matte and a glitter. I think that the satins are just the right texture of satin. And I know I said I regretted buying this, but I think it's only because I thought that I already had so many things that were like it. But if it were the only thing that I owned, I have to think about it that way. You know, it could absolutely solve for all of the eyeshadow in your collection if it was the only one that you owned, you know? And this is the Wall People Bio Brightener. Another fairly inexpensive product. It's $20. You can get it on Credo. You can get it at Target. Do a little powder moment. And another thing, if I were someone who were carrying a makeup bag around all the time, I am not sure that I would carry around an extra eyeshadow palette just to have an eyeliner color. And so since I did not choose an eyeshadow palette that has a really, really deep shade in it, I would probably still carry an actual eyeliner. So I have the Victoria Beckham in Coco. I think that that would probably be something that I would go for. It's very easy. It's pretty long wearing. It's super easy to work with. And it has its own dry down in a really nice way. I don't think that it becomes waterproof, but it does become pretty smudge resistant. And it's just as easy to work with as anything else. I just think that the compactness of a pencil would appeal to me more than carrying around an extra palette. So then I'm gonna go in with some brows. I have no idea what brow pencil I would probably be using had I not discovered Thrive through my channel, but I would like to think that I would still have discovered Thrive <laughs> without my channel because they're such a lovely brand. I would probably, even though I've never found a brow pencil that necessarily wronged me, I would probably still own a lot of things from Thrive and I would probably still buy their eyebrow pencil. I would also undoubtedly still use the Glossier Boy Brow. I was influenced to try this even before I had a channel. I remember the first place I ever saw it was on Leanne's channel. And I know Kiki also loves this. And so I would probably still be consuming the same kind of content. And I would still probably have found this a very appealing formula. And honestly, a tubing mascara is probably the most user-friendly thing that I own. It is probably the thing that most applies to this scenario of what would I use if I couldn't be bothered? <laughs> <laughs> to know a whole lot about makeup. I think that the wash off is so appealing with a tubing mascara that it would be something that I proselytized about to all of my friends regardless. I think that that was honestly like one of the reasons that I felt so compelled to start a channel was not just that I was watching so much content and thinking, wow, I could be a part of this. I think that I have like, you know, a voice, but also I was that person who every time I found something good, I just like tried to sell it to all of my friends. <laughs> And I was like, okay, well, my friends are tired of me. Maybe I'll just go on the internet. Cause I was definitely that person. Definitely, always an evangelist for anything that I thought was good. So, <laughs> needless to say, this would not exist without my channel, okay? Is that a weird thing to think about? I would never have had a lip liner named after me had I not discovered Thrive and had I not had a channel. But let's just think that maybe, maybe there would exist still a lip liner that would suit my fancy as well as this does. And not that I think that Hourglass necessarily deserves anybody's money right now, but this would probably be, you know, we're all looking for holy grails. This would probably be the solve everything lip gloss for me. And so this is the Unreal Lip Gloss in the shade Provoke and it follows this same cool toned family. To me, it just looks like sophistication. It looks so put together. It's a lovely formula. It is minty, so it's plumping. I was always a plumping lip girl. Always, always, always. It goes really well with this lip liner. And it's probably the closest thing to a lipstick that I would ever feel comfortable wearing on a regular basis because it does have a lot of pigment to it. Little bit more blush because I still am who I am. I'm gonna mix a little bit more of the contour in there because I feel like it's cooling it off a little bit in a good way. And do I think that I would even go for a highlighter? I am not really sure. 
I'm not sure that I would be a highlighter person, honestly. Like this already gives me so much. And I think that it's it's just enough. Like I look like I'm wearing makeup. Yes, I don't think that anyone would believe that I woke up like this, but it's enough that I feel like I could get daytime and nighttime looks out of it. And it feels just like pretty and fancy enough for me. So I'm gonna move you guys out and we will chit chat a little bit on closing thoughts. So this is a really interesting little thought experiment, isn't it? Trying to just remove knowledge from your brain. <laughs> it's never gonna be perfect, but what I aimed to do with this little thought experiment today was to come compose a set of products from my collection that I felt like were a complete thought. In terms of their temperature, in terms of the look that I thought I was going to be able to achieve with them, in terms of versatility, and in terms of a conciseness. Just this is a product that is going to solve three products in my collection or something like that, that if I were someone who had solved my makeup routine, these are the products that I would choose, but could I apply that and stamp this process all the way throughout my collection and compose little capsules that all served a very, very similar purpose? Absolutely. Just because I picked these products doesn't mean that the other products in my collection are just like not worth it or too fussy or too big or annoying or not useful or something. It's just like I had to pick one. And I think that if it were to come down to it, this is a super, super easy face of makeup that, you know, given what I'm wearing and stuff like that, this is what I would probably choose, but I could get so many other looks out of as well. And I think that if I were the kind of person who wanted to have one teeny tiny bag of makeup, I would want them all to fit into the same kind of temperature category and always work together, whether I were to turn the volume up or turn the volume down on my, my look, depending on how fancy I wanted to be. You know, am I gonna editorialize with a little bit of glitter here and there? Yes, probably. Or like, you know, with a clear gloss instead of like a colored gloss, absolutely. You know, and you can always buy more blush. You can always, I can always justify more blush, but I wanted to really, really, try to simplify. That was kind of the value of this exercise today. Less about removing the information from my brain, more about if someone were to come and swipe my whole collection, <laughs> what would I repurchase? And this is definitely a face of makeup that I would still want to own. I hope you guys did enjoy this. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.